Good afternoon and welcome everybody. My name is Keely Mitchell and with the Ohio and I'm with the Ohio Pork Council. At Ohio Pork, I have the honor of working with and on behalf of Ohio's pig farmers, like the one we'll be visiting very shortly, to help them in their mission to provide safe, affordable, and nutritious pork products while also taking great care of the pigs, people, and planet while doing so. We're so glad that you've joined us today for a live virtual tour of a pig farm with Farmer Anthony, where he will share how he cares for his pigs every day, while also working to protect the environment. Before we go out on the farm, I'd like to take care of a couple of housekeeping items so you'll know how to interact with us today. We want to make today's event as engaging and interactive as possible and encourage you to submit your questions to Ask Our Farmer. If you're joining us via Zoom, we invite you to submit your questions to us at any time throughout the trip by clicking the Q&A button found at the bottom of your Zoom window. We'll try to have our farmer answer as many questions as possible during today's event. We're also live streaming this trip to YouTube, and if you happen to be watching us there, please note that the live chat function has been turned off to allow the video to stream without restrictions on school devices. So you can sit back and enjoy the program. With that being said, let's introduce our farmer and get this trip rolling. Today, we have the pleasure of connecting live with Farmer Anthony from a pig farm in Ohio. We look forward to learning about all the ways Farmer Anthony and his family care for their pigs. Good afternoon, Anthony. Do you want to start us off by telling us a little bit about yourself, the farm that you work, the farm that you work on, and what you do there on a daily basis? Hey, good afternoon, Kaylee. So my name is Anthony, Farmer Anthony, and we are in Northwest Ohio, uh, and we are a grain operation and a hog operation here, uh, farming about a thousand acres of grain. Uh, consisting of corn, beans, and wheat. And then we've got a little over 7,000 hogs on our farm. Uh, we are a wean to finish. Uh, so we have a nursery that holds 2,400 uh, baby pigs in. And we also have two finishers that, uh, that we take from those pigs from the nursery and take them to the finisher where we'll uh, finish them out before they are um, finished out there. Awesome. Farmer Anthony, do you want to go ahead and flip your camera around and show us what you have in your farm? Yep, we will. There we go. So as you can see, uh, we're in the nursery here uh, today for you guys to be able to see all the baby pigs. Uh, these pigs uh, came in here about a week and a half ago, so they are right around 30 days old. Um, as the pigs come in they are weaned from their moms at 21 days old so they're about 12 and a half to 13 pounds when we uh, get them in here and we will sort these pigs out um, in size so with basically when the pigs come in we'll take roughly about the bottom 15 to 20 percent and we will put those in separate pins and the reason we do that is that way um, we take kind of the, some of the stronger pigs and and put those together um, to where they can fend for themselves as far as getting to the food and, and everything and take the smaller pigs uh, and pin those uh, separately from the bigger pigs. And we'll start those out um, with a little bit more pellets um, uh, that has a little bit more milk replacer and vitamins and stuff like that, just to help uh, the, the smaller ones get started off um, correctly. As I said, when they come in, uh, we will start them on a pellet diet uh, for about the first two to three days, which is the same uh, pellets as they were getting um, when they were with their moms at the sow farm. And then we will transition over to a corn and soybean uh, based diet um, that the pigs will be on for the rest of the time. Uh, now I say for the rest of the time, but we typically go through about 20 different uh, stages of meals uh, from the time that they come to us at 21 days old and about 12 pounds to the time that they go out about 300 pounds uh, off of our farm. So in those different types of meals will consist of um, 
your your typical corn and soybean diet, um, but mixed in with different salts, different uh, vitamins that the pigs need um, at different stages of their life, just like uh, we need uh, as uh, as humans. Awesome, Farmer Anthony. We did have a question submitted by one of our classes, and they noted that your pigs look awfully clean. Talk to us about <laughs> that. Um, they thought that pigs were supposed to be dirty or playing in the mud. Yep. So in a in a modern barn, which uh, is probably about close to 90, 95 percent of, of what America is in a modern barn, um, you can see that we have holes in the in the slats here that I'm sitting on. And that that are in the pins, so and that is where their uh, dunging goes or their manure goes uh, down into there. And I'm basically we're setting we have basically have a basement underneath us that holds all of our manure. Now, as you can kind of see over in the corners, it is a little bit messy over there. Um, but actually, pigs are extremely clean animal, um, and they will pretty much uh, design a or designate a area in each pin where they will all go and the, that way they're able to keep the rest of the pen uh, clean. So we always get comments about how, how clean the pigs are. And we always tell everyone, we promise you, we didn't go through and give them all baths, but you can kind of see just how clean the floor is there underneath that they're all standing on. And that's typically um, whether we're in our finishing barn, which is a cement floor in there to uh, help carry the weight or we're here and where we have a plastic floor it's pretty much all the same. Uh, our pigs uh, stay clean and, and we're able to keep them healthier that way as well, instead of uh, rolling around in, in all of that. Awesome. Thanks, Farmer Anthony. Another question that we had submitted here, one of our elementary classes is learning about sustainability. And you mentioned that your um, pigs, obviously, you're collecting the manure. So can you talk to us about what you and your family do with that manure? Sure. So when we when we look at hog farming and, and most of animal agriculture, it's kind of a full circle. So what we're able to uh, to do is we're able to feed our animals the corn and soybeans that are grown here in Ohio and different states, you know, across the Midwest. Uh, that goes into into feeding the pigs, which grows them. We're able to take that manure then, and in return, able to put that back onto a, our fields where we grow our corn, soybeans, and wheat, and able to use that as fertilizer instead of, and it's a natural fertilizer for us, um, instead of a commercial fertilizer. Um, on our farm, we are pretty much, uh, pretty much 90% all uh, manure and uh, fertilizer instead of uh, using commercial fertilizer other than some nitrogen for corn. So, but we're able to complete that circle and, and start it all over again every year on our farm. So we, when we're dealing with our manure, we are making sure that we are using, um, putting the right amounts on that we need and soil testing and doing that stuff to make sure that we're good stewards of the land. Awesome, thanks Farmer Anthony. We have a question from Miss Maria's class and they would like to know if you know about how much your pigs eat every day. Uh, Typically, so for the whole entire farm, we typically get about seven, uh, four to five semis a week that come in uh, to the barns. Um, and it all depends on how much um, on the size of the pigs. So, uh, you know, the nursery pigs aren't going to eat as much as what the uh, bigger pigs are. But if you look at for what our rate of gain, if you have a uh, mini Snickers bar, uh, the pigs in the nursery will gain a mini Snickers bar in about an hour, and our bigger pigs will uh, will gain about a smaller one of the smaller uh, Snickers bars, the bite size, or the the smaller ones. They will gain that at about an hour. So um, these guys have fresh water, fresh feed, twenty four seven. So they're able to eat and drink whenever they're wanting to, and whenever they want to want to get up and get around. So uh, when we talk about the modern barn, uh, that's one thing that is, is nice. Um, we have our feed lines that you can see uh, over the feeder. And behind that, that little circle with the 
with the hose coming from the ceiling, that is where the water comes from. So they're able to get that um, at any time. Uh, right above me, you can see there's air inlets that provide uh, fresh air for these pigs all the time. And they are all done by computer. So we can set different parameters uh, for the barn on how we want the barn to act. <laughs> Excuse me. So when these pigs come in, uh, the barn is warmed up to about 82 degrees uh, when they come into the nursery. And from that 82 degrees, they'll go out of here in about 45 days. Uh, and it will be right around 70, 73 to 74 degrees um, based on what the pigs like as far as a comfortable temperature. So just like us as we're babies, we like things a lot warmer than, than what it is as we grow older. And then when they go into our finishing barns, which they'll finish out there uh, from about 45 pounds up to 300 pounds, uh, that'd go from anywhere from 75 degrees down to about 67 degrees. So during the summertime, uh, we are you know, having fans and we're trying to cool these pigs down as much as what we can. And then in the winter time, we have heaters and I can show you show you one of the heaters there, just that box that's hanging from the ceiling. That is a heater that uh, allows us to be able to keep the temperatures as close to what we want uh, for these pigs to be able to, to thrive and do as much as what the, and grow as much as what they can. Awesome, thank you, Farmer Anthony. We had a question from Miss Amanda's class and they would like to know what breed of pigs you have on your farm and if you ever get different breeds on your farm. So the breeds that are typically in a modern uh, are that are pretty much across America are a mixed breed. Um, and we basically do that for a certain uh, line of pig will be a little bit more um, lean. Um, so we're looking to be able to take, as you see on the screen there, uh, take different traits and qualities of all of those pigs to be able to create a really uh, good finished product uh, that you see uh, on the shelves at the grocery store. We have a question here from Miss Clifton's class, and they would like to know what the average number of pigs in each litter is. Yep. So a mom or a sow, uh, when she's given birth, typically on average is about 12 to 13 pigs. Um, is what the average is uh, for uh, how many babies she's going to have. All right, and a follow-up question from that um, Farmer Anthony, Miss Abby's class would like to know about how long you keep each load of pigs on your farm before they go to the next stop. Yep, so when we get the pigs, uh, it's about 165 to 175 days. It takes us to go from about 12 pounds all the way up to 295 to 300 pounds. So it doesn't, it doesn't take us very long. Um, and we can, we can attribute to that, to the, to the conditions that they're living in um, of being temperature controlled and, and having everything that they need uh, as, as they're growing. All right, and then Miss Jessica's class would like to know, um, if you guys and your, are you and your family raise baby piglets or if you get them from a different farm? Yep. So we do not have any, any moms or any sows on our farm. Uh, we only have, we only get these pigs in at 21 days when they're weaned. And then we will finish them out, like I said, up to the 300 pounds on that. So these guys will be in this barn for about 45 days. Um, and then we'll move them over to the over to the next barn. All right, Miss Alice's class would like to know from our Anthony what the gestation period of a pig is. Yep, it's what we call the triple threes. It's three three months, three weeks, and three days is pretty much what the gestation uh, period is for, for a pig. All right, Farmer Anthony, we have a question kind of about you and your family here. Um, what is one of your favorite parts about raising pigs and what is one of the most challenging parts about raising pigs? Uh, let's see. Um, uh, we like, we love raising pigs uh, just because we're able to create a healthy product for everyone to eat. Um, 
you know, getting up early in the morning, seeing these guys, uh, working with the babies, you know, and seeing, uh, seeing them continue to grow, um, is, is pretty fulfilling for us. Um, as far as challenges, um, I don't know, everything is mechanical, so you'll always have something that breaks here or there. Um, but as far as challenges, um, modern barns, uh, have definitely taken a lot of the challenges out um, because we're not out in the elements per se, you know, like what we were, uh, you know, 20, 30 years ago, um, as I remember it when we were, when I was a little kid. All right, Farmer Anthony, thank you. We have a question from Miss Lori's class, and they would like you to explain what the term wean means or weaned piglet means. Yep. So a wean is when basically they're taken from their mom and not, um, not on their, not using their mom's milk anymore is, is basically. So these pigs, uh, they're with their mom born and then they're with their mom, uh, at the cell farm for 21 days, roughly 21 days. And then from then they are brought into our nursery or, uh, other nurseries that are, that are around Ohio and um and then finished out from there all right we have a question from miss michelle's class and they would like to know farmer anthony how much the pigs weigh when they come to you and about how much they weigh when they leave your farm yep so when they come to us at 21 days old their average is about 12 and a half to 13 pounds so size of a small dog um one of those yippy dogs that I that I call, and then uh, when they go out of here, then they're about uh, two ninety five to three hundred pounds is pretty much what we average. Now that has changed over the years. We used to go out at two hundred and sixty five to two hundred and seventy pounds, um, but uh, like I said, as times have changed, uh, we've continued to uh, go out at, at a at a heavier weight. Right. We have a question for Miss Maria's class, and they would like to know if your family works closely with a veterinarian to take care of your pigs. Yep. So we have a we grow for a uh, for a bigger farm. So and they have their own veterinarians. Uh, so we work closely with them. We also have a what we call a barn manager that comes around once or once a week or once every couple of weeks. Um, and we'll come and check on the pigs uh, just to make sure that they don't see anything um, that's happening. But if we start to see some sickness or something like that, we'll work hand in hand with the veterinarians um, and be able to, uh, to take care of and get these pigs feeling a little bit better. And Miss Elizabeth's class would like to know, um, they recognize that your family doesn't have the baby pigs or the mama pigs, but they would like to know... Um, about how long the baby piglets stay with the mother or the sow before they come to you. Yep. So when the baby pigs are born, uh, they're with their mom for about 21 days, um, which is that weaning period. And then at in the, that morning of their 21st day or right around there, then that is when they are brought to uh, our farm to where we will finish raising them out. We have another question here, Farmer Anthony, and they would like, this class would like to know if you could um, explain their pigs diets again or what the pigs eat again. Yep. So we have a, what I call a pellet food uh, that has uh, different vitamins, milk replacer, things like that, uh, baby pigs need. And they do that for about two or three days uh, when they come to us. And then we will switch over to a corn and soybean diet. And I'll let you see in the feeder here and kind of see the consistency. So basically, we're, we're talking about just uh, ground up corn, soybeans. And then, as I said, different diets, uh, different minerals, salts, things like that, that, uh, you know, our bodies need, uh, the pigs need the same exact thing uh, for them to be able to, to thrive. So um that's basically um you know what the, what the pigs eat and they will eat that corn and soybean meal diet pretty much from uh after two or three days being in the nursery all the way until we finish them up 
but um, within that time period, they'll have different diets and different um, vitamins and, and such to be able to help them out at different stages of their life, just like, just like us. All right, Farmer Anthony, we did have a couple um, of the same question submitted here. Um, these classes um, realize that you probably don't name the pigs on your farm, but can you tell <laughs> us how you identify the pigs that are on your farm? Uh, as far as identifying them, so we don't really identify them unless every morning. So when we start out <laughs> around five o'clock, five thirty in the morning, we are able to walk the barn, make sure everybody's up, make sure all of their ears are, are kind of pointed up and, and flopping around. Uh, that is one good sign to make sure that everybody's healthy. Um, you know, as you're walking. So right now, Currently, there's about there's roughly 25 pigs in each pen uh, here in the nursery, and we kind of keep it to a smaller uh, amount, just that way we can uh, give extra care and getting started off. And then when we go over to the finishing barn, then they're put into groups of 56 pigs into a pen, and that's where they'll finish out. Um, one other thing uh, that we like to point out um, is pigs are a very sociable animal, so. If you kind of see right over in the next pin there uh, from where I'm sitting at, you'll see them all laying uh, next to each other. And that's pretty common. Um, and you'll see all that area uh, that they're able to go lay at and get away from each other if they want to. But that's it's pretty common for these pigs to all just lay on top of each other and pile into the corners of the pins. Um, and they, they do that just out of, out of what their nature is on that. So... When you see different pigs, uh, pictures of pigs, you know that, uh, hey, they don't have very much room or something like that in our pens. Well, if you look at the broader area of the whole entire pen, you'll see that there's more than enough area for pigs to go lay. But it's just it's what their nature is of laying on top of each other and sitting there and picking on each other. As you can see, they just they're just like uh, uh, just like us as we were kids. They'll sit there and just pester and pick on each other the whole entire time. Awesome, Farmer Anthony, thank you. We have a question for Miss Lori's class and they would like to know if you could talk about some of the health and safety reasons for why you raise your pigs in a modern pig barn rather than outside. Sure, so it, it basically comes down to biosecurity um, and being able to keep everything at a controlled temperature, you know, big, Big swings and weather, just like for us, uh, will you know that's where uh, cold and flu season comes for for humans and pigs are actually extremely uh, close. Um, if you were to cut a um, a pig open and, and look at its insides, you're pretty much looking at what a human looks like. Uh, so that's why uh, you know in the medical fields you'll you'll hear of you know, replacing valves uh, in a heart valve or something like that with a pig's uh, heart valve because they're the same, pretty much the same. Um, so being able to keep them in a in an environment like this, and as soon as these pigs uh, are moved out of the nursery, we'll spend about uh, 20 hours of power washing, cleaning to where this barn will look pretty much brand new. Uh, you could you know, be able to eat off the floor practically uh, by the time we get done. Um, and that's the same for when we're in our finishing barns. As soon as those pigs are moved out, everything is washed, everything's disinfected, wiped down to where we've got a fresh, clean environment for that pig to be able to come into uh, the next time uh, as soon as we get the next batch of pigs in here. So that's very important for us um, on the biosecurity is being able to keep the outside bugs out um, but yet giving them an environment that, um, that they can thrive in. One other thing is I had seen a question uh, that was on was about rolling around in, in mud. Well, uh, if you see a pig that's outside and rolling around in mud, they're typically using that mud as a sunscreen because their, their skin will burn and sunburn just the same as what ours will. So they're using that mud to be able to stay cool, um, you know, when they're outside. But here in the barn, 
uh, with the fans and the air inlets and things like that, we're able to, and misters for when the pigs get a lot bigger, we're able to do, use those types of things to be able to keep the pigs cool and keep them, keep them thriving. Awesome. Thank you, Farmer Anthony. We have time for one more question here, and we have a question for Miss Alice's class, and they would like to know if the ingredients that you use in your pig feed come from local farms or maybe even your farm. Uh, so our farm is a little bit uh, too far away from where the feed actually comes from where the, the home, where all the sows are located at, at the feed mill. Um, but, uh, the corn and soybeans that are grown all throughout the Midwest, um, most, almost all of your corn and soybeans goes into some sort of feed, whether it's dog food, uh, cat food, or, you know, feed for poultry, uh, dairy, beef, hogs, you know, it's all of our, you know, yellow corn that we typically what we call it, you know, across the Midwest is goes pretty much to all animal agriculture. So as I said, it's kind of a full, a full circle for us, um, for us to be able to use it. All right. Thank you, Farmer Anthony. It seems like we have quickly reached the end of our scheduled amount of time for this field trip. So if there are any classrooms that need to disconnect at this time, please feel free to do so. And we thank you for joining us. From Anthony, this has been fantastic, and we thank you again for connecting with all of us today. We certainly appreciate it and look forward to connecting again sometime soon. As we wrap up, I want to be sure to let everybody know that there'll be a post-tour survey open in your browser upon the conclusion of the tour and in a follow-up email that you'll receive in 24 hours. We would greatly appreciate you taking a moment to complete that survey to help us evaluate our trips. Speaking of trips, Ohio Pork has a few more trips on the calendar for this spring, so you can head over to um, ohiopork.org backslash field trip or virtualfarmtrips.com to view that schedule and sign up to join us again. As always, you can be on the lookout for more information to come regarding our events. On behalf of the Ohio Pork Council and Ohio Pig Farmers, Farmer Anthony and our technical producer, Dan Tolan, we thank you again for joining us. Have a safe and happy week, and we hope to see you again on a future virtual field trip. Have a great day.